Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to join us today. It's a celebration and a time of mourning, and, and uh, we're just really grateful that so many would come out uh, to be here and to pay your condolences to the family as well. So, Francie and family, thank you for coming, and it's a privilege to participate or be a part of this here today, a good man that we are going to celebrate. My name is Donovan Friesen. I'm one of the pastors here at this church. And uh, Harry and Francie have been connected here for a number of years. And uh, so it's been a, a, a real treat uh, to get to know them over the years. Um, I was telling Francie earlier that I had, all night long, I was dreaming about Harry. And uh, you might think that's sort of a little weird, but uh, it could be because of the funeral. It could be because of uh, maybe God wants to reveal something. I'm not quite sure. But I had three distinct dreams that I remember last night. One, I was shooting with him. Have any of you ever shot? Uh, gone trap shooting with him? Okay, yeah, so a number of you have, which is amazing. And so definitely the two of us were doing that. And then I saw him hiking. Uh, he was hiking a mountain, and he was really healthy. And I assumed that this represented what heaven would be like, or that he was in a new body now, and that was going to be okay. And then I had a meal or coffee or something. We were in a diner, and we were spending some time together and just talking. And so I thought to myself, like, God, why would I have these types of dreams? What is it about it? And again, maybe it's because of the funeral, but maybe it's to put our attention on like there's hope beyond this life. Maybe there's hope that is beyond, not maybe, there's hope beyond. And uh, Harry was very confident in his hope that was in Jesus and that he is in heaven right now. And so with that, I want to pray. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a eulogy. We'll have a slideshow. We're going to do some singing here as well. And so I invite you to participate here alongside. But would you bow your heads with me as we pray? God, I thank you for today. Thank you, Jesus, that we have an excuse to get together. It's not a great one, but it is one. And we get to remember someone who's impacted many, many people's lives. Thank you. Thank you for Harry. Thank you that he's gone to be with you in heaven. Thank you for the family that is left behind. And God, I pray that you would comfort them. God, would you be very, very near when it's like lonely nights? Jesus, would you be really, really near to them? Would your spirit come and be together with them? Thank you, God, for family. Thank you for the connection that they have. Thank you for the love and the bond that they have together as a family. God, they're going to need that in this season. Thank you, God, that Harry is not suffering any longer. Thank you, God, that we have hope of heaven. Thank you that he's gone on before us. And thank you that in his new body... There isn't pain and suffering, and for that we give you praise. And so, God, I pray that today it would be a time, again, to remember, but a, a time to reflect and to think, to consider our lives. God, I pray that we would be able to put our attention upon you. God, thank you. You are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to be here with us. Thank you for this time. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll have a slideshow followed by the eulogy. What a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness What a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all
to dread What have I to fear Leaning on the everlasting arms I have blessed peace With my Lord so near Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure
first, thank you all for joining us in celebrating the life of Harry Humby. This past Tuesday, a week ago today, my father took his last breath here on earth and his first breath in eternity. If he were here now, he would tell you the same thing that he told me, that it's okay because he loves Jesus, he knows where he's going, and he's lived a full, meaningful life. And he has lived a full, meaningful life. Harry was the beloved son of Jack and B. Humby, and the precious younger brother of Shirley, who he would often fondly say helped raise him. He was an uncle, a cousin, and a teacher, and a friend to many people. He was a loving husband to my mom, Francie, who was the love of his life. He was my dad a father who constantly expressed his love for my sister Celesta, my brother John, and to me through words and many actions. He was a caring, sorry. He was a caring father-in-law to Leo, Sarah, Zig, and he was grandpa to his seven grandchildren, Kezia, Priscilla, Rachel, Josh, Noah, James, and Anna, and he was so loved. A full, meaningful life indeed. Although my dad often recalled that he hadn't really cared much for school as a child, he became a teacher and later a vice principal at Pierre Radisson Collegiate. He would come home with wild stories about the things that happened at school. I remember listening with wide-eyed fascination at the dinner table as he'd tell some story about some event during the day. My dad was a great storyteller. His favorite thing about his role there though, was being able to help his students. He always got a kick out of finding that extra credit so someone could graduate, so that school wouldn't be the thing that held them back. And he loved it when a former student would see him somewhere and call, Mr. Humby, and then share what they'd been doing since high school. It meant something real to him, knowing that he'd been able to make a difference. There was meaning in helping others. He volunteered at Evangel Chapel's Drop Zone, a lunch program for teens, and he was a member of the Canadian board for the Eagles Wings Children's Village, which was an orphanage, it is an orphanage and boarding school in Uganda since it was first founded in 2005. My dad lived a life of learning. If you knew Harry Humby, you probably know he was a master of many things. For example, in addition to being a science and physics teacher at Pierre Radisson Collegiate and a vice principal, he was also president of the St. Boniface Teachers Association for a time and a professional photographer. He was a licensed advanced amateur radio operator, a lifeguard, a volunteer swim co uh, instructor, a student of Kung Fu and then of Kendo with two black belts. When he was 65, he started trap shooting and has won more than 150 prizes provincially, nationally, internationally. He was president of the Manitoba Trap Shooting Association for two years, president of the Winnipeg Trap and Skeet Club for the past three years, and he was inducted into the Manitoba Trap Shooting Hall of Honor on August 20th. And that's just to name a few things. Now, if this doesn't impress you, you should also know that there isn't a person in this world who could get out a sliver from a little girl's finger. Or, or pull off a wood tick or bandage a skin knee like he could. In fact, even when I was an adult, if I needed help with one of these things, I'd find myself calling my dad. Once, when my husband was away on a trip, my three-year-old son got a wood tick, and of course, my dad made the 25-minute drive over to my house to take it off. The next time I saw my dad, he'd actually made me a wood tick remover so that I could do it the next time. What gave my life's meaning too then was the time he spent with family. I mentioned that my mom was the love of his life, and she was. He loved spending time with her and going on their countless big and small trips. They shared a love of animals, especially dogs. 
there were very few conversations I had with him where he wasn't bragging about how intelligent and kind she was. They were married for 53 years. And of course, there were our summers at the lake. The weeks we spent together, the week we spent together at the, a cabin every summer was such an important part of my childhood. I remember us feeding squirrels by hand, hiking through the woods, and walking down to the little store. As adults, we continued this tradition, getting the whole family together and heading to the lake. Those evenings we all spent around the glowing fire, eating sunflower seeds and roasting marshmallows as my dad kept the flames going for as long as we wanted, will forever be a part of me. My father's love and encouragement, his unwavering support, these things have all shaped my life. Immense meaning was also found in faith. My dad became a Christian in 1981, but where I saw his faith in action the most was when my mom was sick last summer and dad rallied us in prayer. I got to see a side of my dad that I hadn't ever really noticed before as he prayed with us and for us and for her. I saw his heart for his family and his faith in our God. I really feel that he held us together. And then when he got his diagnosis this August, the first thing he did was remind us that he knew where he was going and that he wasn't afraid and that he lived a full and meaningful life. My father recently told my son, what's more important than all the trophies and all the black belts is how you treat people. When someone you cross path with years ago sees you and gives you a hug and a thank you, or when you hear about the positive impact you made on someone's life, that is worth so much more than any accolade. He lived those words. There are many people here in this room who could attest to that and many people who couldn't be here today who could also attest to that. Like me, you may be heartbroken at this earthly loss. <laughs> at the loss of a man who loved and who gave, who served others and who lived a full life of meaning. Yet we can take comfort in his confidence that he would wake in the presence of his loving God and in our knowledge that he is there now. Thank you for remembering him with me. If you're able, you're welcome to stand with me as we sing Amazing Grace.
Apparently, Harry's life was like sort of my dream life. <laughs> I didn't know all the things. I knew many of them, but I didn't know all of them. So thank you for sharing. Kind of makes you want to like evaluate and consider and add a little bit more adventure to your life. At least for me, it does. When life starts to come to a close, it seems like this is a time when people begin to consider or ask questions. And there's all sorts of questions that may come to one's mind. What impact did I end up having, I think is a question. Or am I leaving any kind of legacy behind? Is there an afterlife? What is it going to be like? Is God real? Have I done enough? All of these things we begin to evaluate, I think, as life seems like it's starting to close in around us. Many, many questions. Some easy, some are incredibly challenging. Harry seemed to have a different perspective, as you heard. He had a different perspective. It seemed like he was just at peace. The number of times, just when I was together with him, he would just say, it's, it's all good. You mentioned it here. It's like, it's fine. I'm a Christian. I know where I'm going. Like, why is this a problem? It's going to be okay. What tremendous faith. He was confident of his future. He knew that he loved God. He knew where he would spend eternity. He knew that this life was temporary. How many times did he tell you, Francie, don't worry? Like every day, probably. <laughs> don't worry, it's okay, it's going to be okay. The Bible says this in John 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. What a promise. If we believe in Jesus, we live forever and for all of eternity. As simple as, Jesus, come, and would you save me from my sin? Jesus, would you come? Would you forgive me? I want to follow you. That is what Harry did, I think you said, in 1981. And the promise that he won't die, that he'll receive the gift of eternal life in the presence of God, where he's celebrating today without pain. I think that's a tremendous, not just hope, but he gets to experience it today. Harry is an avid trap shooter. I didn't know what trap shooting was until I met Harry. And every conversation I think I had with him involves something around this line of shooting. I would suggest that he's probably the best there is. Right, Francie? Is there anyone any better? I know today I'm a little biased and uh, we're allowed to do that. Although I know there's many of you that were shooting buddies with him. So maybe you have a different perspective in terms of who is the best. Can I only imagine the fun and the competitive nature among those who would gather together. I had the experience of one time going shooting with him. He brought me to the club just out McGilvery past the perimeter. I don't know what it's called. And he said, Pastor, you need to come. I'm gonna help you learn how to shoot. And I'm like, that sounds great. And I was gonna learn what trap shooting was all about. So we went out there and he set it up and he tried to explain it. We made sure that there was enough clay pigeons or whatever you would call them uh, that were in in the thing that shoots clay pigeons. I don't know how to describe it well. You would know better than I would. And uh, he gave me his gun, and he said, this is going to be great. You can do this. So I was having a great time. 
and I was learning how to shoot, and the first one that I got, um, you just feel like you, you're fantastic. And so at some point, I wanted Harry to show me, what is it like? Like, what is the pro? How do they do it? And so he was going to have it, I think we went and set it up where there's a little microphone that when you would say a word, like, yep, the microphone would, that would trigger the, the trap house to, to shoot. And we had doubles set up, so he was going to shoot two at the same time, where he'd go, shoop, shoop, and he would shoot them. So I'm a pretty extroverted person, so Harry would stand there, and he was all ready, and he'd go, yep, and then they'd go up, boom, boom, as fast, well, you know, as fast as you can imagine. And I was so excited, I'm like, Harry, you are so good at this, how did you, and he's going like this to me, I'm like, you did so good, that's amazing. And the whole time I'm cheering for him, there's just more skeets that are firing and firing, He's like, you're right, Donovan, you can't talk. Like, you can't, like, look. And I'm just watching as they were launching into the air. I'm like, oh, really, it's not a sport for maybe the loud. And so I was like, okay, I'll try to be quiet. And I had such a hard time. However, Harry was an incredible encourager. So when I was together with him, trap shooting for the first time, he had almost convinced me that this was my sport. Uh, maybe he just wanted more people involved, but Donovan, you're a natural. You do it really, really well. I can't believe that you've never hunted before. This is really fantastic. You should get into it. And part of you inside was like, he believes in me. And I started to think about what it would have been like to be a student of his. Or someone that he took under his arm or his wing. Real and genuine encouragement. sounded like he had many crafts, many things that he enjoyed to do. And he would take anyone on the adventure with him, I'm certain. I have many memories of Harry and Francie here at church as well. Francie would be downstairs with her crafts and her ideas of teaching the children and what that would look like. And Harry would happily sit in his spot in the church. And anyone that would come and talk, he was happy to come and have conversation with them. Always seemingly at peace. It's like he already knew that he had lived an adventurous and full life. And anyone that would come and engage in conversation, it was there. Not too emotive, at least when he was at church. And uh, very, very peaceful. A number of months ago, I had the honor of bringing communion uh, to the hospital. Wow. <laughs> A beautiful time that we had, hey, Francie? As we remembered that Jesus died on the cross, took the burden of sin so that one day we could spend eternity with him. And it says in the Bible that we're supposed to often do this. Remember his body that, and his blood that was shed on the cross for us. And I remember a nurse came in to check on something. And Harry, just midway through our prayer time, was like, oh, no, 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 no. We need a few more minutes. We're not done here yet. And uh, we just stayed in this moment where we would remember and we prayed. Preparing for perhaps the inevitable of what was to come. I don't know why it's like this, but again, when we're close or nearing death or sickness, uh, things become so much more tangible or present, I think, in that moment. And it seemed as though Jesus was right in our midst with us. And last week, the day before he passed away, Francie had invited me to come and spend a little time. Sitting with him, and I didn't know if he would be clear of mind, and his mind was really clear. It was sharp, and he was also tired. And I, he just... He would sit up and say, oh, God, please, I want to come home. Please, I just want to come home. I want to be in heaven now. And over and over, he said this. He was ready. He had lived a life that was full. And then when we prayed, we just prayed, God, please, would you take him home soon? And the next day, in his sleep, just like he had hoped, in his sleep, he passed away to be with Jesus. Like was already said, Francie, I remember you saying that you were so grateful for your marriage. But one of the strengths was that you were so in love with each other. <laughs> what an amazing thing to say after 53 years of marriage. You and Harry modeled an amazing marriage, the support that you had for each other. Your differences were great, and yet you bragged about each other all the time. I think there was very few conversations that you couldn't get excited about the other person. And when Harry didn't give enough credit to himself for how well he shot, you piped in and gave all the details about how great he actually did. Thank you for modeling what a marriage is like, one that's centered around Christ. The Bible tells us 
what Harry is experiencing right now and what his new body is like. This here that we saw was just a shell. It's not Harry. It's not him anymore. It's just his body. It says this in 1 Corinthians 15. It talks about our dying bodies being transformed into a body that will never die. That our mortal bodies will be transformed into immortal bodies. That when our dying bodies have been transformed into these bodies, we will never die. And the scripture can be fulfilled that says this. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sin, your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God it gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. I echo that prayer. To surrender our hearts to Jesus, to know that the gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That God is victor has victory. Jesus has victory over death and sin. And finally, I want to read a passage about what Harry is perhaps experiencing today. I can imagine um, him wanting to come down and say, this is what it's like and it's worth it. I can imagine him saying, no, no, you want to give your life to him because eternity is beyond anything that you can imagine. There's an author in scripture that had a vision of what heaven was like and tried to explain it in words that maybe we could understand, but I don't think it does any justice to what heaven is probably like but the wall is made of jasper and the city of pure gold is pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl and the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth and the twelve amethyst. I don't even know what those all are but I'm sure they're beautiful. The 12 gates were 12 pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. Francie and family, one day we see him again. And he's in heaven today, and it won't be long. Harry, it won't be long. I don't know if you can see down or hear. And one day we get to come and spend eternity with you. Would you bow your heads with me as I pray? God, thank you that you provided a way through your son Jesus that we can come into relationship with you. Thank you that, that you don't demand anything of us. You say, just come and believe. Turn your heart. Follow me. Jesus, thank you that Harry modeled and lived this life. God, thank you for a full, rich life that he lived. God, thank you for the family. Thank you for the the close-knit family that they have, that they want to be together, that they were all able to see him before he passed. God, thank you. And Holy Spirit, would you be here with us? Would you call us and lead us and direct us to you, God? I pray that all of us here would one day be in heaven together with you and with Harry. Thank you, God, for this afternoon. We give you all the praise. Thank you for our friend. Thank you for our dad, brother, grandpa. Thank you for the legacy and the life that he lived. God, all praise to you. Thank you that he gets to spend eternity with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with us as we sing a closing hymn together?
Thank you for coming to join us here today. And uh, we have some refreshments that will be in the lobby. You can grab a plate and you can come anywhere in here or in there if you would like. And after some time, we'll head over. Anyone who would like to join us, we're going to head over to uh, the St. Patel 
uh, gravesite, I guess. Cemetery, you bet. So with that, I'd like to end things with a word of prayer, and then I'll ask the funeral directors to come forward as well. So God, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our friend. And as we go and bring his body to its final resting place, we know that that is not where Harry is. This is just the body, the, the earthly frame. God, thank you that you are able to keep us from stumbling and then to present us before your glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. As the family is going to go out, it's just an invitation. If any of you are like, I, I would like to talk with someone about faith or God, this is a request that Harry would have as well, and I would be open or willing at any point today or another time um, to participate that way with you. So thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Bless you as a family.